Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on G-protein coupled receptors. Okay, so we're going to begin this playlist, uh, this incredibly important playlist, with a video on the four different types of receptor. So, this is going to be on the types of receptors. We're going to go through the four main types of receptor. So we'll begin with the ligand-gated ion channels, we'll then talk about the G-protein coupled receptors. We're not going to do them in particular uh, uh, intricate detail, of course, that's what the entire playlist is going to be on. Uh, then we'll go on to the kinase-linked and related receptors, and then finally the nuclear receptors. Okay, right, so the types of receptor then. So, we begin with type 1 receptor. I suppose I should probably just tell you the basic principle of what a receptor is. So, basically, um, we have mechanisms of communication within the body, basically. Uh, tissues can release signaling molecules, and they can induce changes in uh, other cells at other locations within the body. And the way that these signaling molecules induce those changes is by binding to a protein receptor, and that receptor then undergoes some change because of the uh, ligand binding to it, and then uh, the receptor will uh, trigger some downstream pathway potentially, or it could be simpler than that, uh, potentially the receptor could be a ligand gated ion channel and when the, um, um, when the um, ligand binds to the receptor it then undergoes a conformational change which opens a channel in the membrane of the cell and then ions will be able to move through that channel affecting uh, the cell in that way basically because you either have something moving in or out and of course the electrical potential difference across the membrane will also most likely be affected. Right, so the type 1 uh, receptors are the ligand gated ion channels, okay? And for short, ligand gated ion channels are often abbreviated to LGICs. So ligand gated ion channels, uh, which is often abbreviated to L for ligand, G for gated, I for ions, and C for channels, LGICs. Okay, right. Now there is another name for ligand gated ion channels. The other name is to call them ionotropic receptors. Okay, but ionotropic is kind of being uh, phased out in time. It's something which neuroscientists still use, but um, if you, for, you, basically if you do use it, you'll probably find that pharmacologists laugh at you using that uh, term. Okay, so ligand gated ion channels (LGICs). So basically, these are proteins which are often in the plasma membrane uh, to which their ligand will bind and that binding of the ligand will induce some sort of change which will then lead to an, uh, the opening of the channel basically and this channel will then allow ions to move through it which will trigger some change within the cell basically. Okay so uh, there are three main classes of ligand gated ion channels. So within this category, you can divide ligand gated ion channels up into three different categories. You have the P2X like ligand gated ion channels. Okay, so P2X like LGICs. Okay, uh, that's number one. Number two is the glutamate like LGICs. Okay, so number two is those ligand-gated ion channels that have a structure similar to the AMPA, the kinate, the NMDA glutamate receptors. So glutamate-like ligand-gated ion channels. And then finally, there's also uh, the nicotine-like LGICs. And these are those receptors which have a similar structure to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So nicotine-like uh, ligand gated iron channels. Now, nicotine like ligand gated iron channels also has an old name. They're also more commonly called the cis loop ligand gated iron channels, and we have an entire playlist on the cis loop ligand gated iron channels. In addition, I also have a playlist on glutamate signaling if you want to uh, look at that. I don't yet have anything on the P2X like ligand gated iron channels, but maybe if you're watching this in the future, uh, I will have by that time. Okay, so. Um, the ligand-gated ion channels can be divided into these three different families, and let's have a look at the structure of these three different families. So basically, P2 
P2X like ligand gated ion channels, they are trimers, okay? So basically, all ligand gated ion channels are not just one protein. When you actually look at a ligand gated ion channel in a membrane, it's not just a single polypeptide, it's multiple polypeptides stuck together. And P2X like ligand gated ion channels, they are trimers. They're going to have be made up of three separate polypeptides which are all stuck together. Okay, so here is our uh, P2X like ligand gated ion channel. Here's the channel moving down the middle, and it will have three separate subunits, one, two, three, okay, like so. So they are trimers, and that's really the way you can think of them, if you like. What we're going to see is that P2X-like ligand-gated ion channels are trimers, glutamate-like ligand-gated ion channels are tetramers, and nicotine-like ligand-gated ion channels are pentamers. Okay, so this is one of the characterizing features. Now, uh, what I will also draw out for you is the actual uh, membrane-spanning topology of an individual subunit of one of these uh, receptors. So the whole channel, the whole ligand-gated ion channel, is three separate polypeptides stuck together to make a big trimer. Okay, what I'm now going to do is imagine pulling out one of those individual subunits and having a look at the membrane-spanning topology. What would you see? Basically, you'd see something that looks like this. Now. For this, I need to tell you which is the extracellular and which is the cytoplasmic side. So this is intended to be the extracellular and this the cytoplasmic. So again, this will be the extracellular and this will be the cytoplasmic. So this isn't supposed to be the other side of this cell. It's just a membrane. Okay, so on the cytoplasmic side, you then have the amino terminus of the polypeptide. It then has a membrane-spanning alpha helix. I'll try and draw a little alpha helix there. Okay, and then... Uh, you have the extracellular domain, which will contain a number of cis loops, and this is why calling these receptors the cis loop ligand gated ion channels is kind of being phased out, because actually the P2X like ligand gated ion channels, their receptor subunits have far more cis loops in than the cis loop ligand gated ion channel subunits. Okay, now I'll explain what a cis loop is in a moment. Okay, so. Here we go. Oh, whoops, I've forgotten to show the membrane spanning alpha helix. Never mind, I won't show them anymore. Okay, but whenever I have a portion that's spanning a membrane, that will be a membrane spanning alpha helix. It will be an alpha helical structure. So these are all meant to be cis loops here. Now, uh, so we can see that the uh, subunit for a P2X like big and gated ion channel has two membrane spanning alpha helixes, two transmembrane domains, therefore, and it has this complicated extracellular domain here. And then on the cytoplasmic side, you have the amino and the carboxy termini of the polypeptide. Okay, so let me just discuss with you what a cis loop is. So basically, a cis loop is a uh, loop in the polypeptide structure. So just like this, it's uh, where the polypeptide loops around, and it's held together by a disulfide bond between two cysteine residues. So to make this utterly transparent, let me draw a picture of one for you. So this line will now represent polymers of amino acids, so it'll be amino acid after amino acid after amino acid after amino acid, and suddenly I'm going to draw the next amino acid for you. So suddenly I will actually draw the structure of the amino acid for you. Okay, and yes, it has been promoted to a much bigger size, and this is because this is the cysteine amino acid that's going to be involved in forming this disulfide bond that holds the whole loop together. Okay, then what will happen is the polypeptide will continue, and I'm not going to draw every single amino acid out, so I'm just going to abbreviate them all as a line. And then you have, on this side, another cysteine amino acid, so I'll draw this, and its R group, again, is a methylene group with a thiol group coming off. Now, you will notice that I haven't actually completed the thiol group. A thiol group should contain a sulfur atom with a hydrogen atom coming off. So if these were pure cysteine residues, what you would have is a methylene group and then a thiol group. Okay, a sulfur and then a hydrogen, uh, but they're not basically. They are uh, go. They're going. To, I've been fortuitous basically in not drawing the hydrogens. What instead is going to happen is these two sulfur atoms are going to be linked together like so. Okay, so here's the carbonyl groups squashed in there, and then it will continue on. Okay, so this link between these two cysteine residues, this is known as a disulfide bond here. 
okay? And because you have this loop in the polypeptide structure that is held together by cysteine residues, okay? And the free letter amino acid code for cysteine is cis. This is known as a cis loop. Okay, so cis loop ligand gated iron channels have cis loops in, but in fact, the P2X ligand gated iron channels, their subunits have more cis loops than the subunits of the cis loop ligand gated iron channels, which is why there's a movement to try and uh, phase out the name cis loop ligand gated iron channels, but they are still called that basically. And you might ask, well, why on earth weren't these ones called the cis loop ligand gated iron channels and these called something else? Well, these were discovered in the 1960s, whereas these were discovered in the 1990s. So um, that's why they didn't even know these existed when they called those the cis loop ligand gated iron channels. Okay, so uh, the glutamate like receptors then. So the glutamate like ligand gated iron channels. They are, again, protein complexes, and as I've already said, they're actually tetramers. So they're made up of four separate polypeptides stuck together to make a channel. So one, two, three, four subunits, all stuck together like so, and sitting in the membrane here. Okay, so they are a tetramer. Right. Okay, and now let me show you the membrane-spanning topology of a subunit of a glutamate-like ligand-gated ion channel. Okay, so uh, in glutamate-like ligand-gated ion channels, the membrane-spanning topology of a single subunit will look like so. So again, here's the membrane, and this time uh, the amino terminus will be on the extracellular side. So here is the amino terminus of the polypeptide. Then you'll have a membrane-spanning alpha helix as you cross the lipid bilayer here. Then you'll have a little loop where you try to cross the lipid bilayer known as the uh, P-loop here, okay? Then the second membrane, well actually it's called the third membrane-spanning alpha helix, but in fact of course it's the second membrane-spanning alpha, uh, alpha helix, okay? And then you have a large extracellular loop here, then another membrane spanning alpha helix, and then your carboxy terminus. Now, I want to stress something. These are not just three separate receptors. You have loads of receptors that conform to this general structure. These are whole families of ligand-gated ion channels. There are absolutely loads of P2X-like ligand-gated ion channels. And in order to be categorized in this family, all you have to uh, have is you have to have a structure where uh, effectively you're made up of a trimer of free proteins and your proteins have this basic membrane spanning topology here. So there are loads of proteins that conform to this structure and are therefore categorized into that family, okay? Again, for the glutamate like ligand gated ion channels, you know, not there's three separate types of glutamate receptors that all conform to this structure. The kinate glutamate receptors, the AMPA glutamate receptors, the NMDA glutamate receptors, they all are within this family. They're all tetramers and their membrane-spanning topologies all look like this. And finally, uh, the nicotine-like ligand-gated ion channels or the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, and I'm afraid they are still often called the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, these are pentamers now, so there's five separate proteins making up the whole receptor. Okay, so once again, here's the pore, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, five, not six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the membrane spanning topology of their subunits. Okay, so if I pull out one of these subunits, what which makes up a fifth of the whole receptor. Its membrane spanning topology will look like this. It has its amino terminus extracellularly. Okay, then it has a cis loop here, which is why they're called the cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Then a membrane spanning alpha helix, a second one, a third one, a large intracellular loop between the third and the fourth membrane spanning alpha helix, and then the C terminus is extracellularly. Okay, so again, there are loads of receptors that all are in this family. So the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are in this family. The GABA-A receptors are in this family. The 5-HT3 receptors are within this family. The glycine receptors are within this family. So there's many different receptors within this family.
Okay, right. So, those are the three subfamilies of ligand-gated ion channels. So, that completes ligand-gated ion channels. Uh, I think we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video we'll then discuss the type 2 receptors, uh, which are the G-protein coupled receptors.